Okay, welcome. We're gonna go ahead and get started. This is our hour gentle flow. On um, today's practice, you're gonna want a blank, one blanket if you have it, two blocks and a strap. And we're gonna be focusing on hips and back bendings to, and back bending today. Um, so let's get started on our shins if you can, if it's accessible to you. And as you come onto your shins, I'm gonna give you just an option to sit with a blanket. And you're gonna take your two blocks, stack them side by side. And you're also gonna have the offering of taking a blanket and tucking the blanket in between your buttock bone and your heels. So it really drapes on top of the blanket. And as you do that, it's gonna give you a little bit more of a lift. And so from here, take your hands just on top of your thighs and then see if you can really tilt your pelvis forward just slightly. So with this, you're really increasing a little bit more of that lumbar curve in the spine when you tilt a little bit more forward. Um, so I want you to really think about from here, um, back bending practices, we think about our shoulders and we think about our, our, our upper body and our chest a lot in back bend, but back bends really originate from our pelvis. And when we originate from our pelvis, we want to create space across the front of our pelvis, but also across the back of our sacrum. So just for a few times, rock forward and then rock back, almost like you're taking a little bit of a mini cat and a cow, but really start the movement from the pelvic girdle. And the pelvic girdle is the pelvis and also the thigh bone. So even as you do this, notice what your thighs are doing. Notice as you rock forward and you rock back, if the thigh bones are really, there should be a slight moving in, an internal rotation, and there should be a little bit of an opening out, an external rotation. And even as you do that with the thighs, notice the control that you're gonna have with the pelvis. That as you move in two directions, front and back, there's really this natural curvature that you're having in the spine. And then as you do that, just a couple more times, come to something that feels that, like it's in between those two, so it feels more neutral. And as you come into that neutral spine, really use your perineum sit down into your perineum, but also rise up. And as you do that, really start to draw your pubic bone forward so it lifts your sternum forward and up. And then allow your collarbones to spread from the left to the right. Then either keep your hands on your thighs or you can take your hands to your heels. I'm gonna keep my hands on my thighs today, but we really want to really feel that lift in the sternum from originating from our pelvis. So really root down into your perineum to rise up through the crown of your head, really through your pineal gland. And your pineal gland really gives you the insight and it gives you the vision to look forward, but it also gives you the vision to look around yourself. And then add the breath with that. As you inhale, feel the front, the back, the left, the right, the up, the down, and then exhale, really come back to yourself at your center. And then take your hands, two fingers, make peace fingers with your right hand and your left hand, really touch the frontal hip points. You're really creating that muscle memory, um, or the not the muscle, but the, the bone, the bonal fronts of where your frontal hip points are. And then again, just three times rock forward, but really think that your pubis is lifting forward and then up, and your tailbone is dropping back and down. And then really rock back so you're rocking onto your sits bones. So then as you rock onto your sits bones, think that your fingers lift up just slightly so you're making more of that concave from the navel drawing in and your hip points drawing up. And then do that again, really use your sits bones to rock you forward, tailbone drops down. And there's almost like a forward bend in the hips, a tucking of your hips at the pelvis as you keep lifting your sternum forward and up. So really noticing those hip points today as we move around the hip, noticing maybe just sometimes um, when things, I know um, Kelly, you said that um, something was going on in the hip, right? So sometimes that becomes our frame of reference. Like we, we sort of think, oh, I don't want to go there, but you actually want to go there so that you have that awareness and that and you have that insight. So we want to move where we traditionally don't go or we don't want to go and then sit up nice and tall. Think that the tops of the thighs spin in 
And as the tops of the thighs spin in, think that there's a moving of the hips out to their own sides. So you're really starting to create that space across the front of the pelvis, but you're also creating a space across the back of the, of the sacrum. And then go ahead and sit up onto your shins. Just take the props off and to the side, but I want you to keep one block, actually keep both blocks handy next to you as you sit down and then take your strap and sit down too. So I'm gonna demo what we're gonna do. We're gonna do dynamic bridge. And as we do dynamic bridge, I want you to um, just watch the first round. And we've done this before, but it's been a couple weeks. If you've done this with me, um, you'll know this, but it's a nice practice to really kind of measure out where our bodies are in relationship um, to our lower body to really connect our upper body. And same thing with backbending practice. When we backbend, a lot of times um, when we come onto our back, we think, oh, I'm just gonna use my legs, but it's also getting the whole upper body and thoracic spine involved. So the first one we're gonna do, we're gonna take our strap around the front of our shin. So aim for about the middle of the shins. And then when we come down, you're gonna find a 90 degree angle from your knees to your heels, just watch the demo first. And as we do this, we're gonna rest the head down, rest the tops of the shoulders down, and we're gonna use the feet. So pressing into the heels, you're gonna lift the hips up. But I want you to notice if you have a tendency to really rock back into your heels, kind of like putting on the brake pedals, or you have the tendency to kind of jump the gun, come into the balls of the feet. So you're almost like you're putting on the accelerator Really, again, just like we did in the pelvis, try to find something that's in between the heels and in between the balls of the feet to find that lift of the glutes up. So you can really open up through the frontal hip points. And then you'll drop the hips all the way down. So I want you to do this 10 times, lifting up. And you can do this slow, lowering all the way back down. And what you're doing is you're really kind of doing that same thing that you did in your seated fear asana. So feel free to come onto your back, and then when you're ready, take your shin around, and then when you're ready, start to go 10 times on your own. You're really taking out that natural curvature in the spine. So you begin, really start to find a little bit, of course, the up and the down, but also see if you can really navigate between left and right. Notice you have a tendency to really push your hips to one side if you're overcompensating. And then really just start to add the breath, moving dynamically, but really using this fold of the hips so that you're folding and you're unfolding yourself. Back bends are all about breaking our habits. We're taking a shape like a 90 degree angle and we're setting up the angle so that we have that symmetry in the body, but then we're working to eventually create more of a roundness, more of a sphere and shape because we know that we need and keep moving up and down. You can pause for a breath if you want to. So we know that when we find these angles, we eventually want to become round like a ball so that we know how to bounce and that we know when we fall, we don't break. And then once you finish those 10 rounds, come all the way down. Take a, take a moment just to roll onto one side and then roll all the way up. Um, so I have a strap. Now we're going to work through the shoulders through that. I have a strap um, that clicks, but you probably have a strap that binds. So I want you to take the strap. We're going to do this underneath our back, but a good measurement is about shoulder distance. So how to measure that is you're going to take it around your forearms, just around the side of your forearms, and then see if it's wider than your shoulders. So if you have a little bit of slack, or if you're noticing that one arm is kind of over to one side, give yourself a little bit less room or a little bit more room, depending on how that is. And then we're gonna work just the shoulder girdle in this. When we come down, you're gonna set back up in bridge pose, but this time you're gonna lift your hips up just enough to take the strap underneath the back around your forearms. And then as you do this, really see if you can push your hands down into the mat and then really use the strap to widen, then start to come into the back bend. But this time I want you to really get the shoulder girdle involved. Walk under the outer edges of the arms, push your hands down, and as you push your hands down, your forearms and elbows might lift a little bit up and off the mat. And then see if you can keep that length 
in the thoracic spine, in the torso, really drawing the shoulder blades together, widening from collarbone to collarbone, and then go 10 times up and down with your legs. So really getting the whole body involved, really noticing that it's not just the lower body that's involved, it's also the upper body. And as you move dynamically with the lower body and the upper body, can you start to play really, kind of playing the instrument of, of the body a little bit more. So we're starting to just tune the instrument of the body. But as we tune the instrument, we wanna to start to play do, re, mi. And as we play do, re, mi, we're really starting to play those first few sounds so that eventually we can play music, eventually we can join the orchestra, but really just now really tuning the instrument so that we can start to notice what's going on in the body. Notice perhaps if there is one side, maybe that's a little, little bit more tweaky today. And all of this, of course, without judgment. So move, moving without judgment into that space. And then after those 10 rounds, take the arms out first from the strap, lower all the way back down. That's it. And then just hug both knees in into the chest. Up and asana. Come into a gentle twist. Drop the knees over to the right. Take the arms out wide into a T-shape. Gaze away from the knees if you want to stretch the neck today. And then I like to give myself a self-adjustment just to go a little bit deeper, taking my right hand on top of my left thigh. And then that really allows me to turn the gaze a little bit more. Check in with the alignment. Notice that the knees are in line with the hip points. And then notice if you're crunching the upper torso or thoracic spine. So you can lengthen through all four sides of the torso, the front, the back, the right, the left. And then use your exhale to send the breath out. Do that one more time. Take a deep breath. Inhale. And then open, maybe side up. Exhale. Then inhale, come onto your back. Again, hug the knees into the chest. Apanasana, that's knees to chest. And then draw the knees over to the left. Arms out wide into that T-shape. And then again, really turn the gaze away from the knees over towards your right hand. And then really consider opening that right palm up. So you're opening up the armpit, you're opening up the collarbone. If you want to give yourself that self-adjustment, left hand can come on top of the right thigh bone. And then really see if you can find a little bit more of the connection of the alignment, hip to knee. See if you can draw the shins a little bit more towards a 90 degree angle. And when you're doing that, you're really creating space across the low back, space across the front of the pelvis. So you're creating that space in the torso. And then moving the twist, really move so you can lengthen your left rib cage up a little bit more towards the ceiling. But keep turning the right rib cage a little bit more open towards that right side. Maybe it moves a little bit, maybe it doesn't. And add the breath, inhale, up, down, left, right, front, and back. Exhale, come back to yourself at the center. And inhale, draw the knees into the chest, come all the way back onto your back. And then go ahead and lower just your left foot down onto the mat. We're gonna stay with this angle. Find Supta Padha Gustasana. Take the strap around your right sole of the foot. And then you should be looped still. Just keep the loop so that you can grab a hold of the end of the loop. And then from here, really notice if your right toes spin out towards the right. Try to find that 90 degree angle from the right heel to the right hip. And then put a soft micro bend into the right knee. So if you do have any low back tension today, keep your left foot onto the ground. If you feel okay, start to lengthen and straighten your left leg long. But keep both sets of toes, all 10 toes, really flexed and engaged. As you flex and engage the toes, that's gonna to help create um, a little bit more uh, of a stretch through the hamstrings, but also see if you can start to connect the top of your thigh, move it up to the frontal hip points. Notice the frontal hip points from your left side to your right side, and then see if you can really draw an imaginary triangle with your mind, all of this. Notice again where your right frontal hip point is, so you can draw an imaginary line from your right frontal hip point to your left buttock bone. See if that gives you a small turn out of your right hip to the right side. And then notice the front of your left pelvic bone, the left hip point. So you can turn a little bit with your imagination, your left hip point to your right buttock bone, so that you're making an X in the center of the pelvis. Your perineum presses out towards the front of your mat. 
and then add the torso, lengthen through the front, the back, the right, the left. Keep drawing the toes up towards your nose just slightly. And then stay for one more breath. As you exhale, lift your left leg up to meet the right. Loop the strap around the left sole of the foot. And then just start by bending your right knee, setting your right foot down onto the mat. So when you do that, you're creating a little bit more of an angle. And then notice if you have that tendency again to turn the toes out towards the left side. So you can really anchor your left heel on top of your left buttock bone. So if you're really flexible, the heel's gonna come closer towards the nose and use that 90 degree angle to really find the heel directly over the buttock bone so that you're really creating that alignment and shape. And if you wanna stay with the right foot into the mat, stay, or start to lengthen and straighten your right leg nice and long. And then use the alignment here again of the pelvis. So when we draw a line with the pelvis in our imagination, this is called cross-referencing. We're really giving our mind more of a boundary so that we have a space to move, so that we know where we go in our bodies. We know where we don't go, or maybe where we don't want to go. So really using this more as a frame of reference. And when you have a good frame of reference, you can measure up well. And when you have that good measurement, you know where you're going, you know where you've been and you know where you are right now in the moment. So take all of this with your imagination without any judgment. And again, find that frontal right hip point, draw an imaginary line from your right frontal hip point to your left buttock bone. And then find your left frontal hip point, draw a line from your left frontal hip point to your right buttock bone, making an X in the center of your pelvis. And then inhale, breathe up through all four sides of the torso, front, back, left and right. Exhale, come back to yourself at the center. And then again, bend your left knee, unloop the strap if you still have it, set both feet back onto the mat, and then take your blocks. You should have your blocks nice and handy. If you don't, grab them. We're gonna use two blocks and we're gonna come into just a restorative um, back bend, a restorative bridge pose, but also have, if you have your blanket, have your blanket handy. So we're going to start with the blanket and we're going to roll the blanket up. So there's a small roll and this is going to go underneath your back. So think right where the edge of your bra strap hits or your, um, or the two tips of your shoulder blades. And that's where you're going to want to put the, the blanket. So just roll that and then put it to the side. You're going to want to take, this is going to, two blocks is going to give you a lot of support for your sacrum. If you just have one, I want you to take it on the lowest side. I think both of you have it on, the, have, have both though. Take your blocks, stack them both on the medium side, and this is gonna give you a wider base for your pelvis so that your pelvis can really be encapsulated so it can really rest the low back. And then when you rest the low back, you're gonna create more space across the front of the body so that you can really find that space and opening in the hips. So we're gonna come down again onto our back and we're gonna come into our first restorative posture, which is a restorative bridge pose. Press your feet down, take your blocks, slide them underneath your low back so that both blocks are really giving you the support. And then you kind of have to tip back onto the, onto the tip of your head a little bit to slide your blanket roll underneath the tips of your shoulders. If your shoulders are still lifted, take the blanket lower, okay? So we want this really to mimic what we just did, opening up the front of the body so that we can really rest the back of the body in the back bend. And then you can either take, I like to take opposite hand to opposite elbow in this pose, but you can also take your arms out wide into a T-shape. Taking your arms out wide into a T-shape is really gonna open up your lungs. And right now, especially with um, this virus that's going around of, of COVID, we really want to give ourselves postures that are really opening up our lung capacity so that we have an opportunity to really go where we don't go, to find a place where we're not stuck. And we'll be here for about seven minutes. I'll start the timer. If you need to come out of this pose at any time, feel free to come out, okay? So know that you're never stuck in a pose, just like Louis Vinyasa, you can always take a rest. You can always find a child's pose. 
But as you do this, if you're framing the arms, opposite hand, opposite elbows above the head, I'll give you about halfway so that you can switch or you can switch the arms and take a different variation. But whatever variation you're in, if the arms are out wide, turn your palms up so you're really opening the arm at the shoulder and you're really creating more space across the collarbones so that you can physically breathe better, okay? So we use the anatomy, we use the alignment to really start to use the imagination to see where we go and see where we don't go. And so really feel the whole body, really encapsulate the whole body. Use the boundary of your own yoga mat to really feel all four corners. Notice this rectangular shape. Notice that with a breath, we also have a four count breath. So as you breathe in, notice the body, notice the response of the body, and then exhale, really breathe out. Notice where you maybe go a little bit longer in an inhale, and then we're gonna use the breath as a four count through this to really use the breath practice to open up where we go and where we don't go. So as you inhale, imagine the breath traveling up the front of the body to a count of four. One, two, three, four. Hold the breath at the top. Exhale down the back. Four, three, two, one. Hold the breath out. This time we'll hold the counts as well. So this is new too. If you find it challenging, just breathe naturally and then you can come back to the normal count and the normal breath. We'll start with the inhalation to a count of four. Inhale, one, two, three, four. This time hold the breath for four, three, two, one. Exhale down the back, one, two, three, four. Hold the breath out, four, three, two, one. We'll do that one more time. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Hold the breath, four, three, two, one. Exhale, one, two, three, four. Hold the breath, four, three, two, one. Take a natural breath in, breathe in. A natural breath out, breathe out. We'll add the breath of seasons on an inhale. Imagine spring rising in front of you. Hold the breath as you ripen for summer. Exhale down the back for fall descending. Hold the breath out for the inside of winter. And then take a natural breath in, a natural breath out. Maybe let it out as a sigh. And if you took an arm variation that you need to switch, switch so the opposite arm is on top if you have opposite hand or opposite, opposite elbow. Or maybe consider switching the arms if you need to, if you need a little bit of a break in the arms at the shoulders. And we're about halfway. And so take this moment to really go inward. You just learned two different breath counts. Maybe just with your imagination, imagine the breath coming up the body, pausing, using the breath to go down the body, pausing, or come back to the breath of seasons. And the breath of seasons really gives us a power of imagination so that we know when we feel stuck, we know what season we're in. Anytime that people get disoriented or they feel, I often hear in um, yoga practice, like I, I just need a break or I just need to relax. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> yoga practice does give us that opportunity to relax or to restore, but it also gives us the insight to go inward. And when we, feel un when we feel like we're stuck, or if we feel like we're lost, or we feel like we're confused, we become disoriented. And the breath of seasons is one way of measuring time so that we can start to know what season we're in. And we have the actual nature that teaches us the seasons of time. Right now, we just moved from spring to summer. And as we ripen into summer, we know it's hot. So when we know when we get overheated, we have techniques to cool down. And so the four count breath is a technique for cooling down. Much like we know if it's too hot or if it's too fiery, we know we should make lemonade so that we cool down. And so as we know which season we're in, also notice what season you're in in your life. If you're in a time of harvest with your work, if you're in a time of great creativity, maybe you're in spring, 
or maybe you're just coming into an opportunity that um, is rest and you you might need that inside of winter so much like the physical season around us our own personal nature gives us that insight of what season we're in so maybe you're in a season of winter after creating a great harvest finishing a big project and so allow your body to come into that season that season of ripening that season of harvest the inside of winter maybe that burst of creativity. Take four more breaths. Measure the count so that you know the beginning, you know the middle, you know the end. Give yourself a count. And when you finish that count of four, you took opposite hand to opposite elbow. Go ahead and release your hands. Start with the blanket that's underneath your low underneath your shoulders to come out and roll it out and then to come off the blocks lift your hips up remove the blocks off to the side and really think your buttock bones move towards your heels buttock bones towards heels buttock bones towards heels which is going to give you the release of the low back and then we're going to find a constructive rest you should have your strap still looped. If you don't, just loop it again. And then this time, take a block in between your thighs. Take your strap. I like to take my strap around my thighs and around the center of my thighs. So loop the strap so that your strap is really around the center of your thigh bones and you have the block in between your thighs as a boundary. And that's gonna give you the flatness, or at least as, as flat as a low back curve as you can get it. And then you can take your feet a little bit wider to the edges of the mat so that you're really trying to knock your knees in, but the block is gonna prevent you from knocking your knees in, but it's gonna give you more of that internal rotation of the tops of the thighs. And as you find that internal rotation of the tops of the thighs, Notice if it gives you more space in the low back at the sacrum, which it should. If you're not feeling that it gives you more space in the low back at the sacrum, again, take your peace fingers to your frontal hip point, lift your navel, lift your pubis up towards your navel so there's a little bit more of a tilt in your pubic bone up, and that's gonna allow your low back, your tailbone to drop down towards the front of your mat so that you're really creating, taking out any of the curvature in the low, low lumbar spine, which is what we're going for. And then you're just gonna rest. You can relax your hands anywhere that feel comfortable on the torso, next to you, and we'll be here for about two minutes to really create that opposition from the back bend into more of that neutral spine in the lower body. And this is a great way just to rest if you have any low back tension or if you've been um, noticing any low back pain, but it's also just bringing the body back to what feels like more of a neutral position. When we back bend, well, the reason people don't like back bends is that it can be very jarring to actually open up your body and take out and break out any habits because we naturally are in a forward bending state. We sit, we sit at the computer, we move forward in our lives, but when we back bend, we're really creating the habits of our past and we're moving out of them. And so this position, which is called constructive rest that we're in, really allows us to come back to um, more of a, uh, a relaxed and released spine, so that it gets our body back into, um, back into a position that feels a little bit more grounding and supportive. And so maybe even just in the mind, exploring how the body felt when it was in the back bend, and then noticing if it feels more supported and grounded with the spine back to neutral. Take a breath in through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. Start with a block. 
take the block out from the thighs and then you can unstrap your legs. Just take the strap off into the side. And then your choice, you can rock up to seated or you can roll over to one side coming all the way up. And then come to seated. I always like to sit on something. So try to sit on a blanket if you have it, or you can roll the edge of your mat up. And then as you sit on something, we're just gonna move through a little bit of a cat-cow, seated in Sukhasana. And Sukhasana is just legs crossed. So take your ankles, shin bones um, can be connected, and then take your hands on top of your thighs. And then five times, start to move forward, and back. Really put this in the pelvis to move forward and back. Find a little bit of your cat, a little bit of your cow, and then just notice. Notice what's behind you. Really reflect off of it so that you can see your potential out in front of you and that you're really noticing the present moment. And then start to turn the torso to the right, moving around to the right, going in a clockwise direction. I like to really kind of over exaggerate my shoulders so that I get my whole lower body and my upper body moving, and then maybe take the vision around. So notice what's out there in front of you. Notice what's to your right. Feel what's behind you. So you start to see around you 360 degrees. And then the next time you come back to your center, go five times back and forth. So you're really seeing what's out there, seeing what's to the right. You're navigating time as you move around time so that you're able to navigate and come back to your central center so that you really articulate what's behind you, what's mediating yourself at the center, and what's your future, what's out there for you. And then switch the ankles so you have that opposition, and then start to move around to the left. Go against the grain. Go the turn of baseball, moving to the left so that you can really Notice the alignment, notice the angles when you run around a baseball um, field, you really have to find that measurement, but then you notice the angles and then you start to really take the angles out. And then put yourself in the pitcher's mound so that you can really see what's around you. You know how to play the game. You notice what you're given, you notice your talents, you notice your inheritance, so that you know how to play against the grain. And then come back to the center when you're ready. Five times again, go front and back, front and back. Really moving from the pelvis so that you're really navigating what's around you. And then sit up nice and tall. Reach your arms all the way up. Take a big full breath. Inhale, cup your palms so you're really open to receiving. Take a big full breath. Inhale. Then exhale. Allow the hands to come back down. Beautiful. Go ahead, take your blanket off to the side and come onto hands and knees for a table pose. Spread your hands evenly and well. Tuck your hips on top of your knees. And then from here, put a micro bend into the elbows so that your elbows split out to the left and the right sides of your mat. And then look out in front of you. Look forward. And then as you press your hands down, try to press a little bit more into the thumb and into the first finger to begin to straighten your arms and your elbows. Turn your biceps forward and turn your triceps back. I'll say that one more time. Turn your biceps forward, turn your triceps back. And that's going to open up the windows of your collarbones a little bit more. So our wrist is really directly connected to our collarbone. And our collarbones are really connected to our lungs. From here, move your hips to the right. And then start to move your hips back like you're coming into a child's pose. Turn your hips to the left and then keep your gaze out. So as you do this, keep your gaze out in front of you so that you're really moving around yourself. And as you move to the right, really start to notice that you're churning your waters. Your waters are your kidneys. So moving with your kidneys, moving that support, and then really start to turn the hearing on. Notice what you hear, that you have a sense of groundedness, you have a sense of safety, you have a sense of security. And then come back, find your table pose, start to move counterclockwise. So really moving again against the grain of time. And then make it personal. So move something out where you feel like you're stuck. Move against the grain of times, so but you can really change your habits. Notice that you can reflect off of your past so that you have your feelings, you know how to articulate them, and then that you can move through forward. 
move through into your future. And then come all the way back. Stay in table pose or tuck your toes and join me in a short downward facing dog. So the measurement of a down dog is traditionally more from a child's pose rather than a table pose. So the measurement of a table to a down dog is a shorter down dog. So notice that that articulation is a little bit maybe more into the hamstrings. So lift your heels up and bend your knees and then allow the bend of the knees to take your gaze forward. So almost thinking that the knees are really the eyes of your pelvis and then spin the tops of your thighs in just slightly and see if that moves your hips out a little bit more to, to, to the right and to the left. Then keeping your gaze forward, look towards your hands, walk your feet up to meet your hands to come into a forward fold. Bend your knees a lot. Again, knees come forward to take the gaze forward. Make two fists with your hands, slide the fists to the inner arches of the feet to measure out your hip distance. And then from here, bend your knees, look forward, rise all the way up to standing. So good, yeah, beautiful, good. Reach your arms all the way up. Good, take your hands to your heart, good. And then Surya Namaskar, half Surya Namaskar today. Inhale, reach your arms all the way up and over the head. Exhale, take your hands to your heart, bend your knees, knees come forward, eyes come forward, fold, come all the way down and fold. Lift up halfway hands to shins. Exhale, bend your knees and fold. Plant your hands, step your right foot back, but keep your gaze forward. Step back to a plank pose. Good, hips up and back for a downward facing dog. Drop your knees down, sit your hips to your heels for child's pose, but keep your arms out in front of you. And then look out in front of you, see what's out there. Start to draw your torso down to the ground, come into your baby back bend. Draw your legs together, face separated, straight your legs, point your toes. Hands into the shoulders, inhale, lift your chest forward and up for a back bend. Exhale, press back your choice, either through child's pose, or you can come into a downward facing dog. And then when you're ready, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your heels up. Exhale, bend your knees to take your eyes forward. Look out towards the top of the mat. Step to the top of the mat. Take your hands to your shins. Lift up halfway. So feel both the forward bend at the hip and the back bend in the upper back as you look out. Exhale, bend your knees as you fold. Inhale, rise to standing. Reach the arms all the way up. Exhale, take your hands through your heart. Relax your hands next to your hips. Left side, inhale, reach the arms all the way up and over the head. Exhale, hands through the heart, fold. Forward bend at the hip, bend your knees, keep the gaze out. Halfway lift, hands to shins, look out in front of you. Exhale and fold. Inhale, plant your hands, step your left foot back, but keep your gaze forward. Keep your gaze forward as you step back to a plank pose. That's the challenge. Lower your knees, hips to heels for child's pose. But again, keep the arms straight out in front of you. And then look out towards the front of your mat. Slide onto your belly. Inhale to baby cobra. Lift your chest forward and up. Exhale, set your chest back down. Your choice, push back either to child's pose or straight back to down dog. And then when you're ready, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your heels. Bend your knees. Roll the tops of your thighs in to move your hips out. Look out towards your thumbs. Bend your knees more so that it comes out of your low back. Step to the top of the mat. Hands to shins. Lift up halfway. So again, forward bend in the hip and back bend in the upper back. So you can really roll your collarbones away from one another so you feel more of that back bend. Yes, and then fold. Inhale, rise to stand, come all the way up. Good, exhale, hands to the heart. Relax your hands next to your hips. Good, come to the top of the mat. We're moving to a couple standing poses. If you wanna take your weight with you, Kathleen, grab, <laughs> grab it. I can, I can certainly add on for you if you want. No. So we're gonna move into warrior one and we're gonna we're gonna back bend with it so you can do it with a weight if you want. And um, feet together, step your left foot back for warrior one. Back foot grounds 45 degrees, bend your front knee to 90, and then inhale, reach your arms 
forward and up. That's it, good. So really feel the back bend in this pose. Back bend from your pelvis. Notice a clock in front of you. Imagine 12 o'clock is in front of you. So you can really draw your pubis a little bit more towards 12 o'clock. That's gonna allow your right, your left side to spin in and down, but press back through your left heel. And then see if that gives you more space across the front of your sac front of your pelvis to move your right hip a little bit more towards three and your left hip a little bit more towards nine. And then inhale, reach your arms out in front of you, lift into a warrior three. Lift your left leg up, turn your toes down, and this is a little bit of a back bend. So put a little micro bend into your right knee. Think the top of your right thigh moves in, and then see if that moves your left hip a little bit more out towards nine o'clock. And then lengthen, bend your right knee, step your right foot and left foot together. Left side, inhale, reach your arms all the way up. Exhale, draw your hands to your heart. Relax your hands next to your hips. Shift the weight into your left foot, step your right foot back for a veer of a dross and a one. Ground your right foot down and then inhale, reach your arms forward and up. Good. Push into your left heel, and that's going to stop your left knee at 90. And then again, really draw your pubis a little bit more forward towards 12 o'clock. So you can really turn the top of your right thigh in and down, but push back into your left heel. And then see so if you can move a little bit more with your left hip to 9 o'clock, your right hip to 3 o'clock. Keep lifting your chest up and back, but use your pelvis to find the back bend rather than your upper back and your upper shoulders. Shift into warrior three, shift the weight into the left foot, pick up your right foot coming into your rear of Andrasana three. And it's a little bit of a back bend. So to find the movement, find it from the pelvis, bend into your left knee, think the top of your left thigh spins in, see if that gives you a little bit more length to move your right hip more towards three o'clock and left hip to nine o'clock. And then bend your right knee and your left knee to meet it, step your feet together. Good, inhale, reach your arms all the way up. Good, exhale, hands to the heart. This time fold, come all the way down. Hands to shins, lift up halfway, look out. Exhale, plant your hands, step either back to your plank pose. If you want a traditional flow, feel free to flow, or you can just hold in your plank. Hold for three, or lower down vinyasa, two. Last one, meet back in downward facing dog. Drop down onto your knees. Take your hips back into your heels. Come all the way into that little C. Take a big breath in. Full breath out. Good. And then come all the way up. Sit onto your shins. If you have a blanket and you want it for your knees, you can use it. We're going to move into um, Eastrox and a Camel Pose. And as we do this, you're going to use the same strap configuration that we've been playing with. So take your strap. And as you take your strap, um, Move it so that it's, again, a good measurement is really having it around the forearms if you lost that measurement. So see if you can really get your arms straight, but you can have that resistance of pushing the strap out a little bit so that it's nice and tight and nice and tight. Yeah, that looks really good. So for this, I want you to first take your blocks, actually just take one block and place it from heel to heel so that you notice that boundary of heel to heel. And then before you get into the strap in the upper back and shoulders, really see if you can align a 90 degree angle from your hip to your knee, and then 90 degrees from your knee to your heel. And then see if you have a tendency to really turn your thighs in a little bit more, if you have a tendency to turn your thighs out. So this all originates from our pelvis. So see if you stretch, if you can stretch your toes and really land and root your big toe all the way to the pinky toe edge of the foot. And as you do that, notice what your thighs are doing. If your thighs are spinning in more, you're probably going to have more of a lumbar extension. If your thighs are spinning out more, you have more of this anterior tilt in the pelvis. So when we do this, we're really noticing sort of where your natural habit is. Then take the strap around the center of your forearms. Really aim for the center of your forearms behind your back. Behind your back, Kathleen. Yeah, good. So before you come into the back bend, we're gonna work just the upper body first, and then you can see in your body how it feels today to go a little bit deeper. Push, straighten your arms, take your hands down behind your back. 
and then use the resistance of the strap, push your strap out using your forearms to push out towards the side. So even with that, start to notice that even that little bit probably gave you a little bit more of a back bend in the upper back and upper shoulders. Then start to find your pubic bone. Find the pubic bone in the front of the body. Lift from your pubic bone forward and up to draw your shoulders back and down. So this is a great back bend. You can stay with the chin tucked in. You can start to take the gaze forward and up. If you want more, tuck your toes in. Make sure your toes are directly over your heels and then start to reach your hands back towards your heels. Make a good fit, hands to the heels, but keep your pubic bone forward and up to find the back bend. And then think, 90 degree angle, use your imagination to really find the angles in the pose. And then see if you can start to use your imagination to make yourself round like a sphere. So find the angles, notice where you go and where you don't go. And then start to imagine a bouncy ball so you can really start to take the shape out so you become more like a wheel, more like a sphere as you aim to get that back bend. To come out of the pose, tuck your chin in, slowly come all the way out, and then untuck your toes. Do this without the strap, but if you like the strap, maybe play with it. Do one more round of back bend on your own so you can go as deep or as um, you know, sort of gentle as you want. I tend to take my hands to my low back, pull my elbows in, then start with my pelvis, lift my pubic bone forward and up. My thighs are spinning in to give me that length across the front of the sacrum and across the, across the back of the sacrum and across the front of the pelvis. Then you can start to move back, 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 back. Keep pushing your feet in. Notice where you connect, where you unconnect. Take one more breath in with a breath out. Come back by tucking your chin in first. Leave the block between your heels and then think your buttock bones move back towards your heels, buttock bone move back towards your heels to come back where we began in Virasana. When you're ready to take your block, just move it off into the side. Come over onto one hip, send both legs out, around, and try you. And then we're gonna come into a forward bend. Um, so two choices, you can use the blanket again behind your hips so that you have a little bit more um, length. And then for a bolster, if you want to have your bolster, options take a bolster high so that when you forward bend, I'm gonna give you two choices. So the first is legs straight, the second will be a child's pose. So know that coming into it. Um, but I want you to forward bend so you're taking a counter with a back bend. So if you always do child's pose, sometimes it's nice to do the forward bend. Take one block on the, on the um, medium side, take your bolster on top, and then a lot of us are gonna need a second block on top so that you can rest your forehead to really forward bend into the pose. If this is like not happening for you today for any reason, Find child's pose with the bolster, and that's gonna look like this. You can take your bolster in front of you. This is probably what I would do today. Uh, take your bolster in front of you, knees will be bent, hands out, and then you can just rest your cheek to one side. So either forward bend is fine, just decide which one feels more, um, more natural and uh, intuitive to you today. But we want to forward bend after we back bend, so we again, bringing the spine really back to a neutral position. And then once you settle in, really start to commit to stillness. And we'll be here for five minutes. If you're in the child's pose, I'll cue you so that you can turn your cheek on the second side. So note that you'll stretch the neck equally on both sides. And then again, just really notice perhaps where you're holding any tension. Scan the body from the top to the bottom. Observe the jaw is clenched. Really find your center point by taking your tongue to the roof of the mouth. And then finding that space around the jaw and the mouth.
And so when we forward bend, when we back bend, I talk a lot about sort of the trinity in this um, esoteric practice of yoga that I teach. But the trinity really helps us see that there's, with this practice for today, there's a forward bend and there's a back bend, but there's three parts to it. And really this trinity gives us the insight. We see that there's a back bend, we see what's behind us, we see where we've been. And we know that there's a forward bend, so there's a way to come out of our back bend. So we're not always back bending because then we would break. But we know how to play between those two things. So we're really learning how to articulate for back bends. A lot of people, myself included, don't like back bending because it's challenging, it's hard. When we first start back bending, we do it for a breath and we're like, oh, we did it, I did it, I'm done. But then we really like the forward bends, we like the forward bending practice. But we really learn how to play both well so that we know how to open ourselves up, that we're ripe, we're open for opportunity, we're open for possibility and potential. We know how to use our memories so that we can see where we've been, but we also know how to move forward. And when we fold, we gather insight. We allow ourselves to go inward so that we can really gain more insight. We know what's personal. And we use those two things, forward and back, so that we can really navigate what's right here in the moment. And so we know we have an outside or protective shell, and we know we have an inside, but we also know that we have a middle. So we're always playing the trinity, we're always playing for three, we're playing mind, body, and breath so that we become more functional. We're playing our heart, which is our left side, and we're playing our liver, which is our right side, so that we can see both right and left, and we know how to navigate to find ourselves in the middle. Take your cheek to the opposite side if you're in child's pose or take it to a space that feels comfortable. And so as you play this Trinity, really noticing where we've been, where we're going. So I often like to use the example or metaphor of getting in a car and driving. We have to really know the parts of the car. We have to know how to actually turn the key in the ignition to start the engine. We have to turn on some music so that we don't get bored. We know how to change the temperature in the car to know when it's too hot or too cold. And we have to look behind us in the rear view mirror so that we know what's behind us, so we know we're going out in front of us to see the windshield. But we also know that we have to really navigate what's to our left and to our right so that we don't get sideswiped. And you don't really get in a car without a destination, so we have to know where we're moving. We have to know how to tune ourselves well so that we can keep moving forward. And we have to build good technique so that we don't fall asleep at the wheel. We know how to use our senses. We know how to smell, to sniff things out, just stopping at a cup of coffee when you're falling asleep at the wheel. Or change the station on the music if you're getting bored. And then you have to know what season you're driving in, if you're driving in winter, or if you're driving in summer, and what the conditions are, what the circumstances are. So that you set yourself up well, so that you can navigate. 
And feel what's outside of you, feel what's inside of you. Add the breath, inhale, front, back, left, right, up and down. Exhale, come back to yourself at your center. And whichever forward bend you chose, slowly roll yourself up, come out of it. And then set yourself up for Shavasana. Set yourself up for the most restorative Shavasana you've ever had. <laughs> So take your, you can take your bolster and place it underneath your knees. That's a nice variation to keep um, this theme of just releasing the low back and the hips. And then if you have that blanket, you can take the blanket behind your head so you have a little bit of a pillow. And then rest yourself all the way down for final rest and Shavasana. As you stay on your back these next few moments, just a reading on summer since we're in the season of summer called The Sun by Mary Oliver. Have you ever seen anything in your life more wonderful than the way the sun every evening relaxed and easy floats toward the horizon and into the clouds or the hills or the rumpled sea and is gone and how it slides again out of the blackness every morning on the other side of the world, like a red flower. Streaming upward on its heavenly oils, say, on a morning in early summer, at its perfect imperial distance. And have you ever felt for anything such wild? Do you think there is anywhere in any language a word billowing enough for the pleasure that fills you? As the sun reaches out, it warms you? as you stand there empty handed or have you two turned from this world have you gone or have you two gone crazy for all the power of things the sun by mary oliver 
begin to wiggle fingers, wiggle toes. Make your way over to one side. Come to a comfortable rest. You're feel free to stay. If you're at home, feel free to stay and linger. And then take your hands together at your heart when you're ready as you come to seated. Close your eyes. And then take a breath to close. Take a deep, full breath. Inhale. Really feel that warmth fill you up. Exhale. Let out anything that doesn't serve you as you've had into your weekend. Blink the eyes open. Namaste. Thank you both for joining. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Tomorrow I'm offering um, uh, Ripen into Summer. It's a restorative practice and breath work, and it's all restorative work. So if you're interested, it's at 1 o'clock, and uh, lots of fun things coming up on the website, too. We have some outdoor classes if you're able. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.